<laughs> My house isn't haunted. Who said that? Aw, oh, yeah. Today, got something special. Part one in a two-part series on the Banshee of Archeron or Archeron. Please do correct me if I'm wrong. This is from an old out-of-print uh, line of miniatures. The game Confrontation by Iraq Miniatures. We've got a nice collection. I love these models, but I'm working on the Banshee today. I could gush about how cool miniatures are from this particular line, but we'll get into the painting. And I want to make a very uh, dark, kind of haunting scene, something extra spooky. So it gives me a chance to add these skulls underneath the surface and to contrast that when I'm painting the stones and uh, other bits of scenery, I want to maintain a very deep, dark atmosphere. I'll paint the model in the second video, but uh, today I've got something real special. This um, webway of skull free hands is fun and easy. It is for me, so I guess it's a relative term, but I'm here to teach you how to do it and in your own way find it fun and easy as well. So let's get into it. To kick it off, I gave myself some options. I have jade, black green, olive flesh, bold pyrrole red, which will come into play later, black, and battle dress green. And I'm gonna paint them rocks. The reason I have the red out is because the, the water will be uh, haunted water, I guess, to sum it up quickly and I want to have kind of an evil red glow with some skeletal faces peering up out of the water. So I'll be laying base coats of that in, but first I want to take care of these rocks that the Banshee will be standing on top of. Um, I just wanted to give myself some colors that I liked that looked uh, boggy, um, you know, a lot of earth tones, just some, some options to play around with. See what I could create texture-wise on all these stones. Just kind of stippling and wet blending and I sculpted a little bit of texture onto them and I can use that to guide myself slightly. But yeah, that's the fun thing about stones is you don't really have to worry too much. There's a lot of uh, naturally occurring patterns and all kinds of colors and varieties. Oh, the wide world of stones, what fun it is. We'll keep tapping along. I like having the jade on the upward facing. That's, that's looking nice. Um, I don't want all these colors to be too drab, so that jade is really adding a, a nice variety. Capture that boggy yet magical kind of environment. And I'm, I haven't used any of the white yet. I'm still just using olive flesh, which is uh, basically just a nice light ivory. But we want to make sure it's not spreading out too far. I need to remind myself as I go to keep these progressions very tight. I want to maintain a a dark atmosphere. It's really going to add to the uh, to the light, to the OSL, and whatnot. That's all going to be present on the model's body as well as coming up uh, from the surface. So it looks like our main ingredient is going to be black combined with battle dress green. So I'll quickly just coat one of the stones with that, and then pull some jade in, but stipple it in, just working that texture up, and kind of bring it down. This works just as well in the shadows as it does in the, the upper areas. Placing it on top of that bright zenithal base coat, it's going to give a brighter tone. And we'll keep tapping that olive flesh, make sure it doesn't get too out of control. And then once I have some of that battle dress green and all flesh together on my brush, I'll bring it down like so and very lightly touching down using the 
texture of those bristles that are spread apart to my advantage. And just like that, I can bring it back over some of these areas that are dried. It's making a nice kind of sea foam green, kind of mossy stone color. Let's take a little bit of black, drop some pyrrole red in there, a little bit more. So the mixture is leaning more heavily on the pyrrole red side, but this color is not extremely important. Uh, just don't don't pull the full brightness of that pyrrole red out quite yet, because our freehand design will incorporate more of that. You know, I'm laying the skulls in; it's going to get brighter and brighter as I make uh, certain areas like the brow bone nose bone and, and such uh, closer to the surface but we'll just cover this up just to kind of get a, a look at what's going on we've got a red and green combination but I'm doing my best for it to not look like like Christmas so let's take some of that olive flesh a bit of that battle dress green now that everything on the stone has had a chance to uh, dry and calm down a little bit. Let's add some some tight highlights up here, just kind of stippling all the colors in place. Yeah, not bad at all. Now I'll take a very uh, thin coat of black. Let's put a touch of jade into it as well. Why not? Let's add a little more intensity to our, to our shadows, but I'm going to take a very thin down pass of black, just sweeping, or black and jade, <laughs> forgetting my recipes already, we're sweeping downward into the shadows. You can see as this transparency goes over these textured areas, it's going to dull them down a bit, but I'll, I'll still, it'll still give me some texture. So I want the overall look of this to be very dark. So we'll just go and do a little maintenance. All right, I'll do the rest of those stones and then we'll be back. The stones were uh, loosely blocked in. Now that uh, everything is all dry, let's go back in with a little mixture of battle dress green. I'll throw some jade and some olive flesh into that. A little more olive flesh. And very lightly, now that everything is dried a little bit, I want to bring out some of these brighter spots, bringing things up to small uh, graduation points, the progression, just tip tapping along. I'll grab some pure battle dress green. If I move down onto the side there, Just like that, but basically I've brought everything up with some wet blended uh, stippling just to create a bunch of extra textures on these stones. And I'm going through and adding even more texture now that everything is dry, but I'm making sure to leave, you know, very uh, thin amounts of paint. Working with the, the transparency, letting things show through all these textures intersecting with each other, kind of... Uh, randomly building up, just having a bit of controlled chaos. Take a little bit of the ivory and jade mixture, just the smallest amount of jade touched into that, a little bit of battle dress green again, and maybe even pure white. I'll swipe that off and I just want to pull out some of these these edges on these stones, so I'll use a very uh, light amount of dry brushing and just kind of really adds to that uh, kind of mossy, uh, corroded, well, weather, weather beaten stones. You know, as this uh, makeup brush kind of randomly catches on these edges, it just adds to that effect. It's the beauty of, of rocks, they can be nice and rough, so 
don't worry about blending. As long as things kind of uh, follow in a general progression. On top of that though, again, let's kind of filter things back down. I'll take the jade, and the black mixture, very thin amount and just looking at each one of these stones as just kind of a circular shape. I'll run a little bit of a shadow around each one of them. Just sweeping into the shadows, allowing some of those textures that I just dry brushed on to show through. So you see you're kind of creating these textures, but then controlling the, the shadows using these larger uh, sweeping strokes, filtering everything down. Not too shabby. Um, next up, let's talk about this wood. Again, I want it to look very waterlogged, you know, mossy, moistened, rotten. So I've got a bit of my black green. Let's pull that off to the side. And throw a little, grab some black as well, and some black green. And then we'll try just uh, sweeping that into a white. The, uh, the gray and the black, the green and the black combining with the white creating this gray tone. Yeah, just generally as the uh, piece of driftwood rises upwards, that's where I want my brighter areas to be. Just sweeping some pure titanium white in there. And con continuing to play with the uh, the wet blending, just making sure those light colors don't take over too much. Maintaining that overall darkness. And want to pick out the very top there. Pull out a few of these. Um, couple pits in here just very gently sweeping over some of the textures not bad and I'll have to give these roots the same treatment at this point everything has been loosely base coated wet blended up a little bit of the dry brushing and stippling and that's where it's at I also laid down some extra coats of that red and black mixture just to intensify our red tone. I have my colors uh, reset here, but I'll take a little bit of black and a little bit of the black green, dilute that even further. And I just want to intensify the tones here. Everything has been wet blended in place on this piece of wood and these little twigs, but I want to make sure that I still have an amount of that green tone showing through. It's just the look that I'm after. I don't want it to uh, appear quite so gray, so just adding a little bit more green, just layering it very thinly. You can see, you know, the transparency combined with the texture of the wood. It's making some things happen. And we'll flip them around and get these other angles. And I'll be carrying the same over these twigs. They might look a little uh, choppy right now. That's fine. I'm filtering it down, combining these tones, smoothing things out just a little bit. In addition to that, on the stones, let's mix up a little bit of our original tone here. 
just that kind of mossy off ivory tone take most of the paint off of the brush the thumb is useful for many things and just because this is all applied a little bit randomly it was you know dry brushed and just kind of haphazardly still in place to create these textures I want to go and just pay a little attention to all those those little interruptions and intersections you know wherever the uh, textures kind of overlap I'm just adding a little bit of a fineness onto that it's a uh, you know getting to that slightly more tedious stage the fun part as it's known in some areas keeping those progressions very sharp drawing them to tight peaks just so everything still has that dark look to it overall now I also want to create the uh, the effect that this water is casting some a very faint red glow upwards so I'll be layering some of that pyrrole red in place very very thin just trying to control the uh, distance that this this red glow is going to be reaching you know as we uh, travel upwards on the stone things will be a little less intense I don't want it necessarily flaming you know I just want a nice little impression of a glow it's going to take a few passes really get it to stick. Feel free to uh, stipple in some textures as well. And it's going to take a few passes. Just be very patient, build these thin layers up. And now I'm acknowledging some of the texture on these stones as well as the hard edges tend to catch more light. Okay, moment of truth. I decided to make that red tone for the surface of the water just a little bit darker, as you can see. Um, I made it a little too bright because I'm going to be layering up this pure red on top of it, drawing these tiny skulls and I wanted there to be a, a larger jump in in contrast larger uh, difference in tone so with that little bit of back step no problem it's all touch and go I mean, I will start this off just by drawing a little nose hole we can pull some cheekbones off of that a little bit of brow bone These can be a little bit messy as well, so don't worry. It's all kind of murky, underwater uh, ghost skull spirits anyways. Not the most uh, orderly and defined group. Let's put some little teeth down there. Not all these have to have a jawbone but this guy will and that can just kind of trail off into nowhere and we'll put little dots in there for the eyes just to make things extra spooky and a lot of these I mean I I would suggest practicing on a piece of paper this can be uh, tricky to get the hang of, but once you do get it down, you realize there's a good amount of wiggle room. Um, I'll be pulling faces here in all kinds of directions. Be sure to uh, rotate the surface around so you're not drawing all the, the skulls from the same perspective. So right here we've got another face going. But yeah, 
good uh, general starter is to just begin with the uh, cheekbones or the, the nose hole and kind of grow everything else around that. And they can kind of swirl around each other. All right, we'll do one more for the sake of example. So I can show you how these all interconnect. And we'll do this one. We'll have them upside down. So start with this little nose hole again. I'll pull the cheekbones into it. Just like so. Some angry eyebrows. And let's make it look like his mouth is uh, a little more open than the others. So we'll throw our teeth in. And then I'll draw the second set a little lower. Yeah, there we go. Smiling. And then around the rocks, I'll draw some little uh, swirls as well. Just make it look like there's kind of a wave effect happening on the surface. And this is a good way to fill some of these, these awkward spots where you may not be able to fit a face. You can just draw some rings of water. Like this area is a little tight, so let's kind of outline the base of the stones. Not bad. I'm going to continue to fill this in, then we'll come back and add a layer of highlights. And voila, there it is. Still just working with the color red. Now um, I'll brighten it up by adding just a little bit of orange to it. I don't want this to turn orange, but I'm just trying to make a brighter red. And making sure not to completely cover the previous layer, I can start bringing things up and paying attention to uh, the brow bones, the cheekbones, areas on the uh, outer boundary of this design. I want to create the impression that they're sinking back into the depths, so I'll be able to leave them alone. Of course, I want to pull up every tooth. And we'll do a few more. And this is going to going to be a process. It's going to take you some time. Patience will yield the best results. And if you're already this far into it, I think you've got the time and the patience to just go at a nice even speed, making sure everything looks just right. And pull some of the eyes up. Decent. So I'll, I'll focus on this area for the video. Um, also, while I have this color out, certain areas of the stones that are closer to the surface or uh, still visible. I want to highlight those up a bit with this uh, brighter red. Just leading towards the surface. And I'll do that in at least uh, three passes as well, so I get a nice saturated version of this color. Stipple it on to mimic that rocky texture. Yeah, once I'm happy with my brighter red, I'll start bringing amounts of white into it. Brighten it up just a little bit. Uh, how about a little bit more? And more orange to that. 
more white. I can really jump further away from that last color because I'll lay this down in such small amounts. And again, just getting the cheekbones, kind of the boundaries, the uh, the edges of like the nasal cavity, the brow. Of course, I want to pop them eyes out. Very, very thin lines on these swirling waters, pressing very, very lightly. Yeah, focus. Whoops. Well, I slipped. Good thing it fell on the mark. Bring up those teeth. So, don't do what I did. Do not slip. I think that's the biggest um, bit of advice to walk away from here. Don't screw it up. You know, if you're, if you're going to make a mistake, knock it off. Stop yourself. And we'll do one more here. Just like all these colors, it's going, it's not going to be done after just one pass. You know, I need to lay smaller gradual amounts down so I get a smooth result. I get a very fine result. Using a very sharp brush. I've got a size one and it's uh, pretty new. Decent. Give the stones the same treatment. Just remember you've already set your radius, so everything is taking place in tighter and tighter boundaries. I think you're getting the general impression. I'm going to carry this out across the rest of the base and come back. And remember, I, I will be laying down more than one coat of these colors as I'm highlighting up, make things uh, a little bit brighter. But yeah, we shall see. And there it is. Pretty cool. I mean, nothing says cool to me like a whole bunch of skulls. They're not quite done yet, though. Uh, before I add the final highlights, you can see on the palette I have a little blob of Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. It's uh, this product right here. I'm going to have to let this dry for a while, but it's a nice um, kind of a gel medium. You can use it for quicker water effects. Don't use it for um, a tear away on a, on a plinth, you know, with some kind of visibility through the water. It'll get cloudy, but for making gore effects, mud puddles, a gloss effect on the surface of this water, it's a really handy tool. I'll save you some time using maybe a thin gloss coat or pouring some resin, yada yada. I'm going to mix just a little bit of that red paint into it. I want to slick it over the surface, keeping it that watery shine. This will kind of filter things down, which is why I've saved my final highlights. I'll do a layer or two of this highlight it again and then add another layer. I mean, in theory, you could do a layer of this between every pass and wind up with a sort of three-dimensional effect, kind of adding to that, a bit to that depth. But yeah, just like that. That looks nice and saturated and lively with that gloss coat. Be sure I push it into every little crevice. And this is going to need a solid 20 minutes to dry at least. And that's only because I laid down a really thin coat of it as well. You know, the thinner the coat, the faster it's going to dry. So let's uh, give it some time to do its thing. Okay, it's had a moment to cure and dry. Final heat. You can see I've got a nice glossy consistency left over. Cool. We'll go through and do another round of highlights. So just a touch more white to that orange and red mixture and apply this very very sparingly let's take a small amount 
press very lightly. You don't have to go over every surface, just pick out a few key areas. Get those eyeballs, the very top of the cheekbones, brow bones, you know, the front of that chin a little bit. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Let's do that again without the uh, overbearing gloss. We'll get this guy taken care of. Those teeth, the eye, the cheekbone, the brow, maybe some of these rings of water. And Shazam! Everything is... <laughs> it's funny uh, trying to film these angles without catching the gloss shine, but we will endeavor to persevere. Onwards we go. Um, before I lay down another layer of Mod Podge Dimensional Magic, I want to use a little bit of heavy gel from Vallejo. Extra heavy gel. I'm going to scoop some of that out with a toothpick and then mix just a touch of white paint into it. I mean, this is going to be a pretty messy process, but I want to create just a bit of that froth, you know, that sea foam. Oh boy, let's scoop some more out. This is a pretty old container. So just the smallest bit of white, a little bit goes a long way. Make sure it's uh, <laughs> well mixed. Good as you can, I suppose. All right, gross. And we'll just tap some right along the border here. Trying to maintain control as well as I can. I bet you're all sitting on the edge of your seats. Man, this is what extreme painting is made of. Unchained. Take that bit off the rock. Almost made it. As this dries, it's it's going to calm down, turn mostly transparent. Okay, so there it is with just the faintest ripple in place. Get some more of that Mod Podge dimensional magic. Just slick it back in place. Just adding a little bit more to the depth, the unification. You can tap it in with the heavy gel. You could take this heavy gel, keep building, making you know higher and higher disruptions and waves. But I just wanted a little something to accent the, the border of the stones. In the haunted water. B -b -b bonus remix. Um, just to be absolutely clear about how to draw these skulls, I'm going to do one in white on top of a black backdrop just, just to further define everything. I, I don't want there to be any confusion. So start with a little nose hole, a little triangle. It's going to take some practice to get those, those right shapes going. Then from the top of that point, we'll draw some lines that will become our cheekbones, just like so. More paint. Draw the brow bones in. Very similar shape to the cheekbones. And now, so you have your rough uh, skeleton of a skeleton. You can start to thicken things up, you know, increase some of the volumes. Fill these cheekbones out. Connect the uh, nasal cavity area. And we'll pull this down. This would be the upper mandible. Throw some teeth in place. Yar. Sometimes five is all you need. And then we'll, I don't know, just add a little style to it. You know, kind of draw the uh, brow bones upwards. Add a bit of that I'm angry furrowed brow look. 
can dot the eyes. And now uh, the lower mandible, depending on how you shape it, you know, it's going to create a lot of uh, emotion. You can imagine that it's kind of a smile. But let's add a bit of a frowny face. And then, you know, pulling the swirls around it in the water, <laughs> which looks like I just drew some really cool hair. But yeah, if we, if we add to these a little bit, make the hair a little cooler. Practice just that before you go trying to throw all these skulls at the wall. Obviously, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I just wanted to take a moment and break it down a little bit further. Cheers, y'all. And finale. There she be. Or at least half of her in all of her haunted and extra spooky glory. This is always a, a really fun effect to just pull some free hand out of nothing. This flat space now has some dimension to it. And I'd be lying if I didn't say my heart grew just one tiny size. So stick around. Next time we'll be painting the figure herself.